This is Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, post 238, competing at Indiana University. And this is Inside HTSO! So one, we've got them. 10, 15 times one, stand by. Wondering what Inside HSO is all about? Well, check out these stories. A former chef turned robber gets served a free trip to jail. It's the end of the road for a suspected killer on the run since 2007. And our crime scene investigators are laser focused on their duties. A warm welcome to everyone, and thank you for spending a few minutes with us. I'm Captain Chad Cronister. We're ready if you are, so let's go inside HCSO. Here's the case of a serial arm robber who was showing no signs of slowing down. Detective Watson, describe how these cases broke wide open. Absolutely, Captain. I would uh, love to tell you about it. We had a series of robberies and a burglary at the Burger King restaurant up off of Van Dyke and Del Mabry. And then in July, Tampa Police Department started having a uh, similar series of robberies that matched the MO of what was going on. Uh, I went down and met with Detective Chuck Hathcox and uh, we determined that it was the same suspect had been committing some adult bookstore robberies in uh, Tampa jurisdiction as the Burger King robberies that we had up there with us. The defendant had damaged his trunk, we believe, when he loaded the safe uh, during the last incident up at the Burger King. By viewing the video, we learned that uh, the suspect on one of the adult bookstore robberies had fled in an older model Cadillac and that that Cadillac had a messed up trunk. An off-duty Tampa Police Department sergeant actually saw an older model Cadillac up at a local Walmart. Uh, by using that information, we were able to identify a possible suspect. We set up surveillance on the individual. The suspect left his uh, place of business and committed an armed robbery of an adult bookstore at that point. When he exited the business, uh, he was captured and subsequently taken into custody. Outstanding effort by everyone, Tony. Criminals don't stand a chance when law enforcement officers link arms. Absolutely, Captain. Uh, you know, the end result of this case was directly because of the teamwork that involved. Uh, us working together with Tampa Police Department, you know, provided a great result at the end, I think. We really needed to catch a break after a mini crime spree in town and country. We got it when our helicopter pilot spotted a big clue. Detective Hugh Powell is here with the story. Detective Powell? We were notified of a series of uh, robberies that occurred. These robberies were within the town and country area and at three separate locations. The first being a Heartline bus station. The victim, while walking up to the bus station, was approached by a Hispanic male who asked him for his money and his wallet and the suspect struck him in the face with an apparent firearm. The suspect fled the incident scene to a Goodyear parking lot where a 90s to 2000 model Chevy S10 pickup was. They proceeded to a Publix parking lot. A white female suspect approached a victim in the parking lot. Uh, the victim refused to give her anything, at which time the suspect attempted to pull her purse off of her shoulders. About 15 minutes later, there was a Shell gas station in which a victim was walking. Another fight, white female suspect demanded her pocketbook. The victim refused. The suspect produced a firearm. The victim gave her her pocketbook. Air service and canine was dispatched. Uh, air service located a vehicle in the river residence in the area that matched the description. Deputies responded to the incident scene, came in contact with all three individuals, and after positive identification by the victims in a lineup, they were arrested. Seven years ago, a career criminal suspected of killing a teenager outside an apartment complex up and disappeared. 
Our fugitive cold case detectives never closed the books on this one. Corporal Gary Denby gives us the story. During March of this year, the warrant section started a uh, cold case initiative to try to address some of the 17,000 inactive warrants that we're dealing with. Um, one uh, case in particular is Rick Joseph. Second degree murder, he's been wanted since 2007. Rick Joseph uh, went to an apartment complex, um, opened fire on a group of young people standing outside. Uh, unfortunately, in that event, 17-year-old Marcus Johnson was killed. He was a Wharton High School student. Uh, after that, the warrant was issued by the sheriff's office, and uh, Rick Joseph was gone without a trace. Detective Stahlschmidt and criminal intelligence analyst uh, Ellison Smith, they looked at various databases, uh, FBI numbers, aliases, and they confirmed that Rick Joseph was actually living in New York under the name of Thomas Brown. Although uh, he had been arrested multiple times and his fingerprints were on file, uh, they never made the connection and that case stayed unsolved. After Stahlschmidt and Smith made that connection, they linked up his FBI number, compared the prints, and verified that Thomas Brown was in fact Rick Joseph. Stahlschmidt was able to lock down his location through social media, various other sources, talking to uh, relatives, and, uh, and they put him into a six block radius within uh, Brooklyn, New York. We alerted the U.S. Marshals Task Force, and within one week, uh, he, was, uh, he was captured. In summary, I guess you can say, uh, Mr. Joseph ran, but he couldn't hide. So here we have a wiseacre who stole a woman's cell phone out of her vehicle and then posted a selfie on her Facebook page. Sure, he probably got a good chuckle out of it, but we would really like to get the last laugh by paying him a visit. All we need is a name. Perhaps one day he will learn how to spell selfie. More than 30 years ago, a woman's skeletal remains were found along the interstate. Perhaps you can help us put a name to this case. Here's more. Beginning in late 2010, Dr. Erin Kimmerling of the USF Department of Anthropology and her team analyzed several Hillsborough County cases of unidentified remains. Utilizing current technology, facial approximations were created and isotope testing was conducted, which can provide information as to what part of the world an individual is from. The remains of a woman in 1982 were found scattered in an orange grove near Interstate 4 and McIntosh Road. She was a white female estimated to be approximately 35 to 45 years old at the time of her death and was approximately 4 foot 9 to 5 foot 4 inches tall. Analysis of her remains yielded a traumatic life with various injuries to include broken bones in the process of healing. She also wore dentures and had evidence of surgical wire just under the middle of her right eye. Clothing was found near her scattered remains and approximations of what it looked like are pictured. Hi, I'm Master Detective Greg Thomas of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office Homicide Section Cold Case Unit. If you have any information leading to the identity of this person, please contact the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Our crime scene investigators use all sorts of resources to gather clues. One of those tools is lasers and they can point detectives straight to the answers. The lasers give us a good representation, it's a visual of uh, possible trajectories that a, uh, the bullet could have traveled. We use them in low light conditions to kind of show us where the shooter might have come from, where the bullets came through. We'll try different colored lasers if we have multiple shots, that way we can see maybe where shot one, shot two, shot three could have come from. The lasers don't have any droop to them. Uh, the old method of stringing, uh, after a certain period of time or distance, the string would actually start to sag. And the lasers don't have any sag, so we can go back as far as we can. We can go back, you know, several hundred yards if we need to. The rods are how we do our measurements for uh, shooting reconstruction. We have to measure angles, the angle that it's the bullet is entering as compared to the vertical and horizontal angles. Um, and the rods allow us to actually put our equipment up to that and measure that as long as we have the, the two fixed points. What we were doing today is by putting the rods in, we're able to show, uh, as you can see from the front and then back in the back, uh, the angles that the person would have been shooting. So if this, you know, for say, as, as a drive-by car, you know, we can look at it and say, you know, all right, the, shot, the shooter was standing in this area and the vehicle was moving. Uh, by putting the rods in. The lasers up front would be able to show us where that person was standing, possibly, as this vehicle was passing by. 
the new rods that we have that allow us to see the laser actually traveling through a uh, an opaque object, something you know we can't see through normally. Uh, the new rods that we have allow the laser to show through that. That would have shown going through the head, uh, windshield. Uh, it would have passed into the headrest area, and if a normal person was sitting right there, it would have been it could have been a deadly shot. We have uh, uh, protractors that we can use. Um, they're special protractors geared towards shooting reconstruction. Uh, we have angle finders. Um, we use laser angle finders, much like you would see a uh, construction or surveyor using same kind of things. Um, and then we take those and we run them through. Basic, it's basic trig. The, the basic math we learned in high school, yeah, we put it to use here. That'll do it for another edition of Inside HCSO. Sheriff David G. and all of us here at the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office say thank you for watching and supporting one of the best law enforcement agencies in the nation. Time for that friendly reminder. You can keep up with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Here's an update on our annual school supplies drive. We proudly donated hundreds of pounds of items to five elementary schools with children in need. Thank you for bringing smiles to lots of students and teachers. We're already working on another episode of Inside HCSO, so make sure you check back with us. Until then, stay safe, Hillsborough County.